social equity and assessing change. Scavenge-based poultry systems are relatively simple. Most inputs come from the households that house the birds. People in the household provide the labour. Minimal feed is provided in terms of household scraps, scavenge found in the household area, and crop residues and wastes. Some inputs may come from markets in term of additional feed, particularly if the birds are producing eggs or are being fattened. The outputs are frequently consumed in the household. There exists the potential for sales, but this may be planned around the needs of the family. Overall, this system involves few people, the contribution to income and nutrition is limited, and few people are impacted. However, the system could well provide high returns with low inputs and low outputs. Small-scale intensive systems are different. They are linked to input markets in terms of feed and inputs, such as day-old birds and animal health products. They may also require investments. People in the household provide labour and will consume some of the products, but the majority of outputs are intended for local and national markets. The systems require the support of a range of service providers, such as traders, financers and transporters. Small-scale intensive systems involve more people than scavenge-based systems, and for the individual household with birds, the contribution to income and nutrition can be substantial. These systems also impact on a wide range of people, from producers and service providers to consumers. Large-scale intensive systems are major users of inputs, particularly feed. They also use day-old birds and health products and require complex infrastructure and specialist skills. The input markets are both national and international. Large-scale units could be located in a household, but may also be separate businesses where a household makes contributions through salaried or casual labour. The consumption of products is minimal, as is the use of internal inputs. The markets for these units are national and international consumers. Many people are involved in these systems over large geographical regions, and contributions to individuals and households can be substantial. If something goes wrong, many people can be impacted, with the largest group being the consumers. As we move towards more large-scale intensive production, what do we see in the food system? Inputs enter national production units and move through complex food systems consisting of trading, slaughtering, processing and retailing. All these processes will occur outside the home before a consumer sees or eats a product. In many countries, production will take place overseas. The majority of people will never encounter production systems or slaughtering units. Animal health and science contribute greatly to this process. The whole system forms an upside-down pyramid, with consumers as the largest group of people. The key concern is that only a few people are involved in production. These few are responsible for the food safety of the majority of consumers and for food security. Never has so few fed so many. How do we approach this complex structure of different systems? For the purposes of clarity, we can break down the situation by enterprise, market and chain. With scavenge-based systems, it is enough to have an idea of the outputs of the enterprise and the seasonal markets for the products. With small intensive systems, it is important to have a good idea of the output and use of feed, and in some cases the fixed costs of the enterprise. It may also be important to look at input markets and in particular at output markets. For large-scale intensive systems, all the information across the system is of relevance, from outputs and inputs at enterprise level through to chain complexity. At the enterprise level, it is useful to look at household interactions, including resource use, gender balance and decision-making structures. In terms of the market, 
It is important to emphasize access to information and technology. Do women, men, rich, poor, the educated and the illiterate all have equal access? In the chain, one cannot emphasize enough the need to look at rules, legislation, private standards, and cultural and social norms. Rules are only as good as their enforcement, so it is important to examine how they are policed. Do these rules apply to men and women equally, to rich and poor, to the literate and illiterate? If there are changes, which among these groups will be affected? How are the systems connected and related? Moving from scavenge-based to more intensive systems, there is a greater reliance on external inputs and therefore input markets. There is also an increasing trend for the sale of products and therefore a reliance on output markets. These imply a need for credit and technology, which in turn requires better skills and more literacy. These systems may be entered either through transition from one system to another or via direct entry. The differences between family poultry systems are important because the critical resources are different, the input markets are different, and the output markets are different. It is important to document the differences between these production systems so as to be able to understand the priorities of farmers and to have a basis to assess change in productivity or profitability. This presentation about social equity and assessing change is part two of a five-part series on the economics of family poultry production.